By the time you watch this, you'll likely have access to the new features I'm covering in this video, which is mainly about obsidian bases. As you know, in the couple previous videos, I've covered bases in depth. Today is just about what's new. Three big things, the group by feature where we can group our data by a given property. And I'll show you three examples in three different bases here. The next we have adding table summaries. I'll show you what that looks like. It's pretty cool. And then also a new view. So instead of just table, or cards, we now have list view. Let's explore when we might actually want to use that. A random but nice change is that we can now toggle the theme with a single hotkey. So the theme that I have on here is called Soft Paper. It's based off of the Annapuchin theme, and there'll be a link to it over here if you want to explore it more. There are two other really important things I'll cover near the end of this video, but let's get into it. So let's begin with the projects base. So what is happening in this space to begin with. Just so you know, we're filtering out everything unless it's part of this folder structure of efforts and projects. And we can see that over here. So efforts, projects, and then I have some active projects, simmering and sleeping projects. So that's what we're seeing over in this space. It looks like there are 98 of these projects. What we're going to do now though, is explore the new features. So one thing that you might have noticed already is at the bottom, there are the summaries. So if I right click on rank, you'll see a new summarize field. Now, each different type of property in Obsidian will give you different options. Since this is a number field, we can average out all the different ranks. We can have a number for the empty fields. We can have a number for all the fields that are filled out, the max, the median, the min, the range, standard deviation, sum, or if they have just how many unique values do we have? Nothing's really standing out to me as something that I'd find useful other than maybe filled. And now we can see at the bottom, we have filled 64. Now I can look at it over here and then just change whatever the active summary is. So that works for all of these different columns, including it looks like the file name column, but here it's just, you have empty, filled and unique. I could choose filled and that just gives me the tally of all 98 projects. What's interesting is once we apply a group by feature, and we have table summaries, we get something pretty cool. Every group has its own summary right here. So we can see that there are 14 filled, but if we go to the bottom of this column, we can see for the entire table, there are 64 filled. So that's a pretty great one-two punch between the group by feature and the table summaries feature. It's really clear to me why Obsidian grouped those two features together in the same release. What if I want to group all of my projects by their folder? You can see that I tend to be using four projects, a folder structure, whether a project is active, whether it's simmering, it's like in the back of my mind, it's kind of just on the back stove, just boiling just a little bit, or it's sleeping. So what if I just want to view things this way? That's where we can hit sort and then group by, and we can choose a bunch of different properties. In this case, let's see what happens when I click folder. Ooh, this is pretty cool. So now we get a sense that I can just scroll through these and immediately see what folder that they're actively a part of. I like the visual separation when we can use the group by feature. Immediately I know that these are my active projects just by looking at them here and I can see them in context to the simmering projects. Now we're getting at something pretty useful. Now before I did this, if I get rid of this group by, we just had a mess. Now this is not that useful. It's still useful in that I can organize by rank and see what I should be focusing on. But sometimes there's a simmering project that also has a high rank. So that might get a little confusing. We can see a previous big project writing original works it still has a rank of five, but it's in the simmering folder. That might confuse me. So this is just an area where if I add a little group by folder, now I'm getting higher quality results that make more sense in less time. Now you're looking at projects group by folder. How might you use the group by feature? I'm very curious. How might you group your information? Is it by uh, something else? Is it by time, file extension? What properties are you excited to group by or that you've already experimented in group by? Let us know in the comments. Let's learn from everybody. So if you have an idea or something, I definitely want to hear about it in the comments. So what I like to do though, if I find a good grouping or something, I want to save that. And I don't want to rely on my memory that I can spin this back up in the future. So let me go ahead and show you how you could then duplicate this as a view for the future. So if you like this view and it's different than your standard view, 
you can go over to the views area, click on this right arrow, and then what I'm going to do is click on the three dots and duplicate the view. And then I'll say something like um, by folder. And it turns out I've already done this, so I'll just add an extra parentheses. And now if we click, we can see we have the new by folder. Now, if you want to move these up and down, go to where the icon is at and then move it into the appropriate place. Or if you want to remove a view, which I want to do right now, I'm going to click that right arrow, the three dots, and then delete that view. You can see I've also done a few different views right here, and we're about to walk through them all. So we've already covered summarizing a little bit, and we've already covered grouping a little bit. I'm about to cover what the list views look like and when I found them to be useful so far. For this video, we're just going to stick with my projects base. But if you join our membership, which is a new experiment that we're trying, that's where we'll have the extended cut of this video. And I'm going to go over all of my notes and how I might organize them. And you'll see I have a few things built out for us to look through. And then also when there are notes that I want to garden. Usually it's I want to plant or link them to other notes. I want to cultivate them. And we'll go through a few different views in the extended cut. So moving forward, let's check out the new list view. Now I have a few I'm about to show you, but let's pretend we're starting from scratch. So again, what I want to do is click on view, the right arrow, and then change the layout. And we used to only have table and cards. Now there's a new list view, and I would not be surprised if there are a few more views on the way shortly. But for now, let's click on list view and see what happens. Oh wow, okay. So this is interesting. Let's unpack what's happening here. It looks like each project is on its own bulleted line. I'm still sorting by folder, which it would be a lot messier if I wasn't sorting by folder. So if I stop sorting by folder, then we just have these bullets. And where is this all coming from? So let's unpack this together. But let's go ahead and put the folder group by back in so we can just kind of focus on the active projects. And so what's happening is under properties, we have displaying file links. It's showing the files that are linked to the existing file. So if we remove that, we'll notice it's going to clean up the list dramatically. This looks more manageable. It's making a bit more sense. In each bullet is a project, and then it's currently comma separated with different bits of information. So if we look at finances in the fall 2025, comma, it's a rank of 4.8, comma, it's in this folder, comma, and if you look at the one above, it points up to this bigger area of effort. And do we have anything else? And if there are other related notes. So if we look at Ideaverse Pro 2.5, it points up to this area of effort called Ideaverse, comma, it's also related to this other project. I hope that makes sense as we're going through it. One thing that we can do now is play around with the different markers. Currently, we're on bullet, but we could also choose a numbered list. So now I could say to myself, I have what looks like 14 active projects. Is that too many? I'd like to get it down under 10. I'm not going to force myself to, though, if I just want to keep a few things nearby. But really, if I just want to keep a few things in the back of my mind, maybe they need to go into simmering. So as I'm looking at taxes 2025, that's probably actually doesn't need to be an active project for me right now. It's something I'd put in simmering. Looking at things this way, it's easy for me to understand that and then make the move. So how am I using the list? Well, let's go back into the views and look at projects list and it says nested. This is something I haven't showed you yet. Now we can see that each project is on its own bulleted line and the important properties are now indented below. So that's pretty useful. And in fact, it's so useful that in this view, I turned back on file links. Remember file links? They were really messy with our initial views when we were trying the list view out. So I can turn that off if I turn it back on. Why this is kind of cool is because in any project, in this case, the Linking Your Thinking Workshop 16, I can see immediately the things that I'm already linking this project note to or that has linked to it. I think that's a pretty powerful thing, just at a glance to soak up all that context regarding whatever project or effort you might be working on. One other view that I think is sort of cool is if you list projects by up. So basically what I do in my notes is for every new note, I have three property fields, up, related, created. I explain why in different videos in different places, but the up field is the most important. It's basically what is the thing that would just be above this particular note? And this is really valuable when you start to have multiple projects, but above all those projects are the same area of effort. 
So a great example of this as I'm scrolling through is to look at my idea verse area of effort. Now this just started out as a project, but over time there was idea verse 1.0, there was idea verse 2.0, 2.5, idea verse 3 that's coming up. So all of these can then just point up to the same area of effort, which is the idea verse. Now I get to see them all in context right here. So this is probably the most powerful list view that I've yet discovered when it comes to the project space. Okay, how are you going to use lists? Please let me know. I'm very curious. Type in that comment, the description, what's going on here. I will definitely try it out. And then if it's really amazing, I'd love to share it with everybody over here as well. We'll explore a few different list views in the garden base in the extended cut of this video for members only. If you're curious about watching that video, the link will be in the description below. So in a nutshell, this new release has three features that you should be really aware of. One is the group by feature in bases, two are the table summaries, and three is the new list view. If you found this video valuable, please give it a like, subscribe, thumbs up, comment below. It's all really appreciated and lets me know what's resonating with you in these videos. Should I do more of these videos, these what's new videos in Obsidian? It's really up to you. And if you want more of that, lovely bases action. Rest assured, I have two huge videos on bases already. We'll link to one right here. And until next time, stay connected.